Have you got any plans for dinner at all? Tonight, we will be partaking of a liquid repast as we wend our way up the Golden Mile, commencing with an inaugural tankard in the first post, then on to the old familiar, the famous cock, the cross hands, the good companions, the trusty servant, the two-headed dog, the mermaid, the beehive, the king's head, and the hole in the wall for a measure of the same, all before the last bittersweet pint in that most fateful terminus, the world's end. Leave a light on, good lady, for though we may return with a twinkle in our eyes, we will in truth be blind. Drunk. Uh, next, I'm delighted uh, to welcome the director, both writers and the two leads in the final part of what some people are calling the Cornetto Trilogy. Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and now World's End, Edgar Wright, Nick Frost, Simon Pegg. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. Hello. It's, that was beautifully harmonious, apart from Nick, who then just <laughs> chips in at the end with his standalone... Uh, I'm a Cl- loose cannon, Simon. It's that kind of Clive Dunn moment just at the end. Nobody! Slightly <laughs> Can I start with some listeners' questions? Oh. From Kenneth Thompson Marchese, I yeah. was a zombie on Shaun of the Dead. The contract I signed stated you'd pay me a pound in remuneration. <laughs> I never got that pound, and I would like reparation. I'll settle for a Cornetto. What do you say? To Done. You? Done. Easy. I'll take a pound from you now. They cost about five, and I don't they, Cornetto? <laughs> he did all right out of that. Nick, it, of like I'd the... say Nick is the only one reaching into his well, pocket. I mean, oh, now Edgar's going as well. like 90p. With a cornetto is probably about one forty. Adjusted for inflation, we probably owe him about one. F- oh, you got a pound fifteen. Excellent. <laughs> Edgar's paid up. Thank you very much indeed. We'll pass it on, Kenneth. Payment has been made. <laughs> Scott Wylos says, "I have a friend who went to school with Simon in Gloucester, and his claim to fame is that he taught him how to do the loud raspberries with two hand noise, whilst in the trapdoor under the drama hall at Brockworth School." He, his name is Paul Hollis, sends his regards by the way and hopes you have put his skill to good use. I have no memory of you, Paul. (laughs) He then says, says, if you can't remember him, (laughs) imagine a man who stepped into a pod featured in The Fly, but instead of being there with a fly, he's been in there with a weasel. Oh, Paul Hollis. Yes. There you go. Uh, So uh, let's talk about The World's End. I won't mention this kind of trilogy uh, idea, and it sort of is a trilogy, but I don't think it was conceived. Does that just tell us what we need to know about The World's End, gentlemen? I think we, we after we made Hot Fuzz, it seemed like we wanted to make a third film that had thematic links. And so, you know, it's like a, a trilogy of tone and sensibility in a way. That sounds really pretentious. But um, you gonna write it. But the, but just because <laughs> they're they're all they're all comedies that are all set in like sort of present day like Britain. And uh, they all feature some kind of like uh um thing that you don't really see in British movies so much so we wanted to kind of like sort of cause like um, a little bit of chaos and they're essentially like relationship films that have some external pressure be it zombies or like um, cultists cultists or like in this one you know what alien aliens Aliens. (laughs) Aliens. so so the so the theme is sort of um, the individual guy against an oppressive thing yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's kind of about it's kind of about conformity really you know it's what you know in Shaun of the dead the threat is conforming to the zombies and in hot fuzz it's being pulled into the nwa you know this sort of demonic cabal of local residents mm-hmm. and in uh, in the world's end it's it's this sort of galactic sort of starbucks thing so it's um it's always kind of been on our mind and i think it became interesting to us after Shaun of the dead and with the pos- possibility of making hot fuzz that we could make a series of thematic sequels you know and, and have three films that aren't uh, with disparate storylines and characters but are related by certain common themes and in some respects jokes as well We've, there are recurring jokes so if, if you have seen the other two there'll be little gems in there for you to pick up on i think that it also kind of looks at friendship male friendships and the way they they change as well you know well well to okay. us anyway, well on know, that nick so so on. so tell the story of the of this gang who were all at school together yeah. And the, the crazy idea of going on this pub crawl again. Just sort of tell us who's in the gang and, and where that fits in with the well, story. Well, uh, it's, it's myself and Simon and the lovely Eddie Marzan and Martin Freeman and and the fantastic Paddy Considine. Gang at school and uh, it's the kind of they're leaving sixth form. It's their last year and they're, you know, they're on a high. They're at the top of the tree and uh, they decide to do this legendary pub crawl in their town. Uh, 12, 12 pubs, 12 pints and uh, they give it a good go. And then they obviously, you know, they fail and they leave school and something happens and they don't kind of see each other for a very long time. Now, I think the failure of uh, the pub crawl really essentially eats Simon's character up and 16, 17 years on, he decides to get the gang back together to try and to complete this legendary crawl. And, uh, you know, it doesn't go 
quite how no, they planned. That might, <laughs> that might have something to do with the aliens, which Edgar has already uh, yeah. talked about. How how irritating is your character? Son? Gary <laughs> King never ever bettered that night back in 1990 when he, you know, he was the guy that was most likely to succeed. He was the top dog, the alpha male at the school. He was popular with the girls. He was popular with the boys. He was the leader of his gang. And essentially, his life never amounted to anything better than that. And we see him catch up 20 years later. He looks exactly the same, apart from he's aged badly. Great outfit, by the way. Yeah, he's still wearing the same sort of gothy outfit he wore when he was 18 or 19. And uh, he manipulates all of his old friends, all of whom don't really like him anymore, have nothing in common with him anymore, to come with him on this journey. And he is incredibly irritating, (laughs) but at the same time, a kind of... There's a lot more to him than that, you know. He's kind of, he's this mercurial wraith from the past. It's like he's the ghost of pubs past, you know, that comes back the to The ghost haunt. of six form past. Yeah. Exactly. Comes back to haunt these four guys and drags them into this... Hell. This hellhole of apocalyptic abandon. And uh, But he was the most fun to play. Of all the characters I've played in these films, Sean and Nicholas Angel, Gary King is undoubtedly my favourite just because he was... It was just a bundle of joy. When you were, when you were, easier sorry. to act against too, because it was also really it was annoying. It was annoying. Yes, because I think everyone is on your side, Nick, because you're you're the guy that's sort of leading leading the voices, saying, "Look, you're just an idiot. Please go away." Yeah. And everyone's going, "Yeah, I'm with Nick really on this." Yeah, I well, I mean, I've said this before. A few times during rehearsal, as we were kind of setting the shot, I'd Simon would do something, and I'd say, "He really going to do that?" <laughs> uh, and yeah, he did it, and it was it was really annoying to watch, and it makes it make it makes my job a lot easier, you know. And I think that says that's a testament to Simon's acting brilliance. Uh, but it's also a thing that we try to um, like do three films where the the hero is extremely unlikely. Like Shaun of the Dead essentially stars a shop assistant from Carrie's. <laughs> um, uh, Hot Fuzz stars an extremely humorless um, police officer. And this one, we like to have this, like, you know, I think a lot of people have a Gary King in their life or certainly know, like, somebody like that at school. Or maybe if they've gone back for school reunions. Absolutely. Yeah. And I wanted to do something where, like, even though he, he, does, his, he does his best to kind of, like, uh, infuriate his friends... He also, like, uh, I have a lot of sympathy for him. And there's parts of, like, me that I kind of, like, uh, you know, I think a lot of people like to sort of look back at their teenage years and like to repeat one night, you know. And it does, those kind of things, like, I, I can sympathise with that. So I, I, I feel, you know, kind of it's like a requiem for that, that guy at school. And the fact is they still, the old relationships that they had as 19-year-old boys... They resurface, you know, and the, the old the old parts they used to play in the gang, they come back. It's like you cannot ever let that stuff go. It's not a rehearsal for and, and, and increasingly so, as more alcohol Absolutely. is consumed, yeah. 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 you become more childlike, as one does. Yeah, yeah, you, we regress. On the, on the subject <laughs> of mu- the music, so the music is, has been important in all, the, all of these films, and this, this does feel like a, a, a wish list of... You know, the best of, now that's what I call 1988 to when <laughs> 80, yeah. 88 to 92. These yeah. are your yeah. personal, your personal favourites. I, yeah. I mean, did you have a, a wish list, then you got permission to use some and not use others? Or? Well, I think we pretty yeah. much got everything we wanted. And actually. we didn't think we were going we to. Like, certain no. songs cost more than you think, you know. Just Which because... is the most expensive song? Can you tell us that? Kylie is my guess. No. Doors. The Doors. The Doors. Which is the one song that's not from that time. I was going to say, what were they doing between 88 and 93? <laughs> that was, but you, that was exactly, I, I would I would listen to kind of like the sort of the uh, sort of jangly indie hits of the day and best offs. So it does feel very like my, my I would listen to all of those things that are on the, well, the um, soundtrack. Well, the Soup Dragons, I'm Free, it yeah. was, was, was a fairly, um, it's, stone, it's the Stones, a big it? spend because it's the Stones. It's the Jagger Richards composition. But we basically decided very early on in the writing process that all of the music featured in the film that isn't score would be from that time period. It would be from the era they went on the pub crawl for the first time. So they were constantly haunted by the past when they were in the pub. So any jukebox music is is from that time. And Edgar and I, we had like a playlist of what, like fifty songs or something. Oh, more like was sort it three hundred songs? Was it Jesus? It was like we had. A, I had. A, we when we wrote the script, we would only listen to those songs and nothing else. So we had this three hundred song. I don't think there's any Stock Aitken and Waterman that's made. There is through. highly. Oh, there's 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 disco. That's yeah. Right. No, Stock Aitken and Waterman is like. A, and it's funny when you actually listen to those songs. It's actually the songwriting is really good and Step Back in Time is really good, except for that keyboard sound. Which is the key, like, saw hit machine thing. You think, oh, if you change that keyboard sound, it would be a really great song. It is a good song. It's a we guilty like that pleasure. One. Oh, no, I was going to say the thing, though, about the, the, the tape as well is the reason that we picked those songs is because Gary King, Simon's character, still uses them as his Bible. They're like his hymns. And we like the idea of this character that would, like, 
live his life by the you know the, the uh, life lessons laid out in Loaded or you know step on God help him or, yeah, exactly but that's he, he actually he actually quotes some of the lyrics himself thinking that he has come up with that so he liked this idea that somebody had like listened to I'm Free by the Super Dragons every day and thinking that's what I'm going to do you know that's my life <laughs> that's my mantra yeah so do you have to get permission to use song lyrics as a piece of script or is it sort of, yes yes yeah and was that quite difficult no, well, we'd already cleared the song, so no. Just when, it, when it's when it's a um, when it's such a kind of loving tribute as well. It's <coughs> it, it was interesting on Shaun of the Dead when we were trying to uh, we were writing the scene when they're throwing records at the zombies. We had to ask permission if we were to, if we were going to show the album covers that we we didn't have chance to ask permission to throw them. But I remember writing a long letter to Mark Knopfler <laughs> uh, about Brothers in Arms, trying to trying to, to to kind of spin it like it's a tribute to the album, not a, a, a utter rejection, which it was. Uh, but they said no. So you see a light blue something, but it's on not the flip the side, Sade, no oh. problem. I found myself in an elevator with Sade in New York several years later, and there was a lot of silence. And then I said, "Thanks for letting me throw your record at a zombie." <laughs> what did she say? She really laughed. It's a good line. Yeah, I know. So, I tell you what, Simon, you are one smooth operator. <laughs> Heyo! Oh Heyo! So having having done the three is 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 that it? That's it. Between you, are you going <laughs> to do some? Are you going to do some more? Well, or I'd, you I'd like separate to, projects. I'd like to think we're we're still relatively young and uh, quadrilogy. I, yeah, I, I, it, they, the next film that we do together won't have to fall within the criteria we set ourselves up for these movies it, it, it won't ha- necessarily have to be set at this time it, uh, it won't have to be set in the UK it won't contain that particular confection um, but we will work <laughs> together again I'm sure and, and I'd be very sad if we didn't uh, we'll leave it there gentlemen thank you very much indeed thank, thank you very so much, much.